afternoon all, Mutton here. I'm standing in front of a large church, not the cathedral, but one of the many churches in Brussels. Anyway, we're not here to film a video about churches, it's another football vlog. So let's head off to the station to get the train to Brugg to watch City take them on in the Champions League. Not the uh, greatest day weather-wise for this either. Let's hope the weather's a bit better in Bruges. I haven't actually been for all my travelling to Brussels itself as opposed to stopping at the airport for 35 years. So uh, it feels a bit odd really. It's a lot more expensive than I remember it to be. And it's actually one of the harder European countries to get into from the UK. Um, I'll just take you through what you have to do in case you're thinking of coming here. You have to be vaccinated for a start, fully vaccinated. Then you have to t either take a pre-departure test within 72 hours or have one on day one or day two and quarantine until your result comes out negative. Then if you're here for a week on day seven, you have to take another. This doesn't apply if you're coming from other parts of the EU, as far as I understand. None of this applies, of course, if you're just there for 48 hours or less. You just have to be vaccinated. So the journey time is about one hour and ten minutes from Brussels and uh, it's not a city I've ever been to before but I've heard it's a bit of a beer drinker's paradise and they even have a beer walk. So I'm quite looking forward to having a few before the game. But uh, like in most of Europe you still have to wear masks indoors and on public transport, not like in Britain. So this is actually quite a quaint city is Bruges. I mean, so many chocolate shops, beer houses, cafes, restaurants, little canals, all sorts of things. Wonderful architecture. Wish I had more time here. But anyway, I'm going to go and hunt for the local specialities, some beer and uh, some mussels and chips before I head off to the stadium. People queuing for waffles, chocolate, all sorts of things here. In fact, it looks like they've got wall-to-wall -wall chocolate shops here, for those who like that sort of thing. Now, whilst I'd heard of somewhere called the Beer Wall before, the driver of the taxi recommended Cambrinus to me because it's actually a bit quieter and not so well known. So given the city's a bit packed, I'm going to try it out and I've seen something that's very interesting on their menu. So let's hope they'll let me in in a football shirt because some places sometimes don't. so many possible ways of having mussels here so I've gone for the mussels with white wine that's the way they recommended it with chips of course so this is what tempted me outside a selection of beers a beer tasting there's like a white beer a blonde beer I think that might be a strawberry beer or, and a dark beer that one's the sweeter so I might start with that one no idea how strong these are so I could be wellied by the time I get there oh well who cares it's match day Here's the city producing a good performance when I vlog for a change. Yeah, it is, a, it is like a strawberry beer then. It's pretty nice. I would never have thought of ordering that myself. And in these parts, there's only one dish I could really try. Mussels and chips, more frit. And um, let's hope that every bit as good as they look. Pretty nice, pretty nice. And the chips. And some sort of mayo, of course, great as well. Before a match, what more do you need? Well, you need the beer, I suppose. And this pale one, 
very hoppy, nice sort of thing. Well, I really enjoyed that. Put a solid dent, in fact, more than a dent, I finished the whole lot. Good portion, tasty food, great pre-match snack. So, um, of the four beers that uh, they served me, I liked the pale one, which is apparently a Namur wheat beer, and it is not as sweet as many wheat beers. I've often been put off them because they're very sweet often, but this one's good and I recommend it. Although I'm not an expert on beer, but it's to my taste. So I'd better be thinking about heading to the stadium, I'll finish this one, find where the taxis are, maybe have a cheeky one there, and then uh, head off for the match. And if you do come here, I mean the menu is huge, okay, it's in a few different languages, Dutch, French and English, but I mean that's the food. That is the beer menu, they have so many beers here, it is untrue, so uh, if you're a beer lover you'd be in heaven in this restaurant and in this city for that matter as well. Well the taxi driver dropped us off miles away and uh, we've uh, eventually found the away end entrance which is uh, obscure to say the least but uh, looks like we'll be uh, alright just in time for kickoff. So as always an obscure route around some obscure parts of the outskirts of the stadium to uh, get us to the away end and uh, what will probably be several security checks. Maybe it's only one, let's hope. So first of all a Covid pass check and uh, thankfully I downloaded my NHS app onto the French app so uh, that goes through pretty quickly in these parts and then uh, a pat down and then a metal detector test so uh, three security checks i suppose not bad these days so we've kicked off nice atmosphere home end pretty full city end pretty full and you can drink alcoholic beer in here which is a real treat and there's the usual booing of the champions league anthem which i thoroughly approve of Compact stadium, this a bit old, the away end is a bit grotty, it could uh, do with improving, reminds me of Napoli a bit. Well, City put the ball in the back of the net, lofted ball from Diaz, uh, Grealish ran on to it, but there was a... Uh, Allegedly a foul. Another one in the back of the net, but uh, a beautifully lofted ball from Kevin De Bruyne. And there was a suspicion of offside. The flag went up late, as it always does, and uh, there's a VAR check and no goal. Lots of good chances for City, just can't quite pull the trigger and fire the gun, but we're battering on the door. have a familiar face in the ex-Liverpool goalkeeper Mignolet and he still can't kick. Penalty to City, well at least a VAR check penalty. The rebound was picked up and um, he was definitely tripped so uh, Mahrez has been taking them uh, recently. Uh, let's see if we can put this one away, assuming he is doing so. We missed too many penalties. Not much of a VAR check, it was that clear. Come on Riyad, stick it away. Here we go. City win here. I know they came back against Paris Saint-Germain, but 
it's 2-0 not 1-0 and we are different gravy so second half started and uh, City have started brightly again I have to say there have been a lot of uh, VAR checks announced or broadcast on the uh, big screens and they've been fairly unintrusive and uh, makes a pleasant change that rather than sitting around waiting for them to happen <laughs> to sit here. Kyle Walker, all people, our defenders are putting them away to them, but played in nicely by the point. Mignolet got a hand to it, but it just wasn't enough, and City are coasting here. And to be honest, we've come out all guns blazing in the second half, some great one-touch play, close control, and uh, for me, that is game over. An earlier fourth there, uh, Phil Foden, who's had an excellent game, has been spraying it around beautifully as uh, hit the legs of Mignolet and nearly went in. That was a classic City, quick press transition, got the ball off them, Sterling fed Palmer, well, for a young lad he finished up beautifully. And then another beautiful ball through, Palmer fed in, Sterling played in, returned the favour, and I'm afraid Sterling as not seems to be too often these days, left it wide. Sterling again, I have to say, chance and a rebound, but neither away. I mean, he is not at the races at the moment. But, uh, well, I'm not good enough to judge whether he should stay or move on, but uh, he's uh, playing with clubs at the moment, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Another good chance went bedding. Grealish skinned the defender, turned, and then tried to shot when he could have passed to a player in the clear to Palmer. But uh, probably doesn't matter, but there's a bit too much of that going on, and we could have had seven or eight here. In fairness, the Rouge fans stayed to the end, no sneaking out, cheering on their team. Pretty impressive. 5 1, Mahrez laid in over the top. The goal's been checked for VAR. I was expecting a flag actually. I couldn't see from this angle whether it was offside or not. But the late flag didn't come up, so uh, reasons to be optimistic. And, uh, I thought he actually took one too many touches, but he did put it away in the end. So there we are. VAR check over. 5 1 to City. At the risk of repeating myself, Sterling, what is he doing? Played in again. Another, he should have had a hat trick tonight, really, having come on as a sub. He just cannot score at the moment. And again, lovely back heel from Grealish, fed in Mahrez, set up Sterling, who couldn't score again. So full time, Brugger 1, City 5, great performance from City, well did we knock the ball around well. So that leaves me very optimistic about the games coming up, we were really at it today, right on the money, and City deserved this. Bruges are no slouches, they did well against PSG, might have beaten them, beat Leipzig away, but we were at it today. Good performance from City. And the boys behind me are having a good time as well. And fair play, the Bruges players are going around the pitch applauding their supporters who stayed to the end and their team fought to the end. And uh, I wouldn't rule them out entirely of this group. And um, 
third place in the Europa League and they're almost certain to get. So there we are, a fine performance and a fine win by City. And I was a bit surprised there was no hold back at the end. We were allowed to leave immediately. But the problem is, there's no transport from the ground. So uh, an hour's walk it is. Oh well, get rid of some of the calories from those scoopos earlier. But uh, let's see if we can get something in Bruges to watch the later games before heading on the last train back to Brussels. And I'd like to add, and I've, I suspect probably no members of the Bruges police force or the stewards ever watch these things, but it was a very well-policed game. They were very respectful, very unobtrusive, and there was no trouble, nothing at all. And in fact, they were helpful. So a pat on the back to you all if you watch it. Uh, if you don't, well, oh well, never mind. Compliments anyway. So I'm back in Brussels now after what has been quite a pleasant day out. Lovely place, Bruges. Wish I'd have spent more time there and hope I get to go again. Good result, um, good crowd, friendly crowd. Only thing I didn't like was the hour walk at the end of it. I mean, there was no alternative to walking. Luckily, one pub 50 minutes in that we could stop at and watch the second half of the other games. PSG got a slightly flaky win, so we're still not top, but we beat them, we win the group. So I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I'll love you and leave you. And don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.